started walking around me in a circle. His face was right next to my face, and the whole time his voice fluctuated between psychotic whisper and R. Lee Emery in Full Metal Jacket. Hey, I'm John Huck, and this is my sketchy story. With high school in my rearview mirror, I scooped up all my graduation money that I had earned from my relatives, and I hit the road to follow the Grateful Dead. Life was perfect, until it wasn't. Four shows into the 1993 summer tour in the parking lot of Freedom Hall, located in beautiful downtown Louisville, Kentucky, I got arrested by two undercover uncles wearing tucked in Bob Marley shirts for smoking weed. I know what you're thinking. Hey, it was a Grateful Dead show parking lot. Wasn't everyone smoking weed? Yes. Yes, they were. And the cops arrested a lot of people that day. So I got popped, zip tied, tossed in a paddy wagon, and carted off to the Louisville jail with a bunch of other Burkett stock wearing concert goers. We were all placed in a holding cell at the jail and told we weren't going to be seeing a judge until the next morning. There were deadheads still in there from the last time the band played Kentucky a year prior, so I knew the cops meant business. This all would have been a huge deal to me if I weren't still so relaxed from the afternoon's activities. With nothing else to do and feeling pretty safe because I was surrounded by other bearded weirdos in tie-dyed shirts and cargo shorts, I went to the corner of the cell, sat down, and went to sleep. When I woke up, who knows how many hours later, a lot of the deadheads had been replaced by some new guys who were wearing full-on orange jumpsuits. To this day, I have no idea how they got in there or why the jail lumped in actual prisoners with a bunch of smelly potheads. All I know when I opened my eyes was these guys did not appear to be music lovers. And a quick scan of the cell informed me that the biggest, baldest, meanest looking one of these dudes was sitting right next to me. I got tense for a second, but then I tried to play it cool. He immediately started talking to me, of course. What are you in for? Uh, weed? You? Murder. I see. Turns out he had killed someone in a bar fight just like Nicolas Cage in Con Air, which had not come out yet. Then, unprovoked, he stands up and demands I take him up on a bet. I have no frame of reference, but I'm pretty sure this is the closest I'll ever come to being challenged to a duel. He managed to get even meaner looking as he asked me to do what he said. He wanted me to bet my dessert, which I would have given up willingly because if movies had taught me anything up to that point, it's that all prison food looked and tasted like stepped on dog turds. But this guy had been to this jail before and he liked the baked goods, I guess? He bet me if I stood in the middle of the cell, he could walk around me three times and without touching me, he could make me move from the spot I was standing in. I didn't really want to do that at all. But as I looked around the cell for advice or help, I was met with a lot of bloodshot eyes who also had no idea what was going on. So I got up, went to the center of the cell, and stood there. He walked at me fast, stopping abruptly right in front of my face in an attempt to get me to flinch. He tried reminding him of the rules that he couldn't touch me, and he rudely told me more or less to shut up. Then he started walking around me in a circle. His face was right next to my face, and the whole time his voice fluctuated between psychotic whisper and R. Lee Emery in Full Metal Jacket. He got personal immediately, talking about what he was going to do to my family, any pets I had, and my girlfriend, who fortunately was living up in Canada at the time. And without going into real detail, he wasn't talking about taking him out for milk and cookies. It was pretty gruesome stuff. He walked around me three times, whispering insults, then barking them. And on the third time around, he stopped right in front of my face winked at me, which to this day is the scariest thing I've ever seen, and then went and sat down, leaving me standing in the middle of the cell like an idiot. Of course I had to move. I wasn't going to stand up all night. This guy basically pulled a hyper-intense dad joke on me. So he got a good laugh at my expense and an extra brownie for his dessert. And the next day, I got out after paying a $350 fine, and I continued on my way to finish up the summer tour. But I think about that guy a lot. He's probably out of prison by now. I'd like to know where he is so I can, I don't know, maybe never go there. <laughs>